Good afternoon, my name is Keith Thompson. This is another of the How To It videos. And today we're covering the riving knife and setting on circular saws. Now, I'll just show you on this panel saw, um, and the reason I've used this machine is because the table stops here, so that the whole blades are accessible, including the riving knife. The riving knife is almost the most important component on a table saw because it's instrumental in, in preventing, as much as possible, kickbacks from ripping timber. Because when you rip a piece of timber, you're cutting down the grain, you're actually allowing the timber to relieve any inherent stresses that are in, inside the timber itself. And if you don't have a riving knife, those stresses can close the cut gap or the kerf behind the blade and allow the back of the blade to come in contact with the wood after the cut has been made. Now that can cause the wood to be thrown up and towards you as the operator, and nine times out of 10, you're gonna be standing in the way. And so the impact with you is going to be in the chest and stomach area, which can be incredibly painful. So riving knives have been a standard fitment on table saws in the UK for decades. It's only really in the last decade or so that it's been common in America. Now, you'll see loads of videos on YouTube about people doing processes in America and they're not using any kind of riving knife or a splitter, which is a slightly different uh, device. But in the main, they're using sledges that guide the work and hold the work. So the risk is minimized in a different way, but it is now law on new machines in the States. So they're copying the good old Europeans and the Brits from years and years ago. There's a little document which you can download for free on the Health and Safety Executive's website, details on the text. And it's a very simple little document that covers many aspects of using a table saw. Well worth just reading it or downloading and printing a copy of it for your own reference. So now I'm going to take the blade off and the riving knife itself and show you how the riving knife on this saw is mounted and how you can adjust it. So the riving knife design is very simple. It should have a curve on the edge which will follow the maximum diameter of the blade you can fit to the saw. Well, this saw takes a 250 or 254 millimeter blade. So the curve matches that. The thickness of the riving knife should be slightly thicker than the plate of the blade, but thinner than the kerf or the cut width of the blade. So in this case, we have a 3.2 millimeter kerf width, a 2.2 mil plate, and the riving knife is 2.3 millimeters. So that always ensures that the work never gets squeezed onto the plate of the blade. So on this saw, because it's a professional made machine, the riving knife can be adjusted for a tilt and to make sure it's parallel with the blade itself. So you can adjust the plane of the riving knife in two or three different directions because in each of these little holes, there is a corresponding little grub screw. It should be factory set, but it's easy to check yourself with a straight edge to make sure that the riving knife is parallel to the blade and not able to, you know, not, not twisted to one side or tilted at the wrong axes in, in line with the blade itself. And the riving knife, as you can see, um, mounts on these two uh, studs, which are uh, pressed into the aluminium block. So it holds the riving knife at a good, uh, you know, in a firm way, but also allows you to adjust it for height for the blade that you're using. This is a proper professional design and not all saws have this kind of design. Um, obviously this is quite an expensive um, panel saw. Most saws, with the exception of the sort of types of things that you're gonna buy from the big shed market, you know, the, the DIY stores, will have some method of being able to adjust the riving knife. Hopefully, most of them will be set at the factory when you buy it, so you won't need to worry about it. But as a professional user, it is something that you need to check every now and again to make sure it's not somehow become out of adjustment. So all I need to do is to mount this block back onto its stud. Um, on this particular saw, there is a little pin just in here to prevent you moving the riving knife too close to the blade, which is a really good idea. So I just need then to try and not drop the bolt um, and fit the washer. 
securing that back onto the block, just finger tight. And now I'll refit the blade. So making sure that the blade fits snugly onto its flange and fit the clamp disc. So the thread on those circular saws on the arbor is actually left-handed and you always undo the nut in the direction the blade is rotating and obviously tighten the nut against that direction, so against the teeth. So that it stops the blade from being worked loose by the cutting of the blade itself. So this block, although it's now loose and can be adjusted, can't go too close to the uh, blade uh, because you have that little pin inside. There's always a little bit of a fiddle to be fair. Just slide the riving knife back over the two studs and then I shall just do the nut up a little bit. This is a right-handed threaded nut, luckily. It has a locking, nylock locking nut on it. So, setting of the riving knife to the blade, there should be somewhere around six to eight millimeters of clearance between the curved edge of the riving knife and the blade. This particular riving knife also carries the crown guard, which is why this mounting hole is on here. If you have a saw with an overhead crown guard, which is more common with the bigger saws, certainly above about a 12 inch blade, 305 mil, then the riving knife will be more of a shape like that and can sit below the top level of the blade. But with a riving knife that also carries the crown guard, that then must be above the blade, otherwise you won't get the full depth of cut on the blade. Just to emphasize this, if I slacken this one off, you can see I can move the whole riving knife backwards and forwards. Slight fiddle. So I've got a bit too much gap there really, so just easing it in. It's not critical, but something around six to eight millimeter or quarter of an inch and slightly above is about perfect. And then do that one up nice and tight. Now I can just get a little straight edge. Um, one of these rules would be really good. And then I can just use that to sight along between two sets of teeth on the blade and make sure that the knife is indeed parallel to the blade. Do that both sides, just put the blade on the edge of a tooth each side and I've got a corresponding gap that side as well. So all is well, it seems to be adjusted correctly, so it's safe to use and that really is all you really need to know about setting a riving knife to the main saw blade.